وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا فَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنِ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد The Quran, the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala The miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is very important on every Muslim to take the Qur'an as the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa for the guidance of all mankind and for us to recite the Qur'an one verse after another to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. This is a duty. We need to change our life according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And this life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created and make us stay on the face of earth for a certain and limited period of time to be tested accordingly. How are we going to adhere ourselves to the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? People follow their desires, people follow the norm that they find around them, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to follow the revelation that He revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we submit ourselves willingly to whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do, all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is the purpose of uh, pondering over the Qur'an and the purpose of this program is to ponder over the verses of the Qur'an to benefit and to see that the Qur'an was revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa 1400 years ago, more than 1400 years ago, but till now, till the Day of Judgment, it's a life and it should be a life in our daily life, in our speech, in our actions, in all of our affairs, our goal is to get to know what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us, what's the benefits that we can extract from the verses directly and indirectly so that we submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse number 84. Verse number 84 from Surah Al-Baqarah and still in the context of Bani Israel, the children of Israel, and the lessons to be learned from these nations before the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did they do with the covenants that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from them and what we learned from this? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim Wa idh akhadna mithaqakum la tasfikuna dimaakum wa la tukhrijuna anfusakum min diyarikum thumma aqrartum wa antum tashhadun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Wa idh akhadna Wa idh means and remember and the call here is to Bani Israel, to the children of Israel, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ and at all times. And remember when we took akhadna, when we took mithaqakum, your covenant, the covenant from you. What is the covenant? لا تسفكون دماءكم Do not shed your, bro- your blood. Do not shed the blood of one another. ولا تخرجون أنفسكم من دياركم And do not drive yourself out of your homes. This is how it literally translates. But it means do not drive out some of you out of their homes. And you ratified to this and you were witness and you bore witness to this covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took from you. And you وَإِنْ يَأْتُوكُمْ أُسَارَى تُفَادُوهُمْ وَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ عَلَيْكُمْ إِخْرَجُهُمْ أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُرَدُّونَ إِلَى أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِرٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ Which means 
then after you ratify it and you bore witness to this covenant, then you and tumha'ula, you are the ones that taqtuluna anfusakum. You killed yourself, meaning you killed one another. You killed your people. وَتُخْرِجُونَ فَرِيقًا مِّنْكُمْ And you drove and you expelled a group, a party among your people from their own dwellings. تَظَاهَرُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ You help their enemies بِالْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ By sins and transgression. وَإِنْ يَأْتُوكُمْ أُسَارَ تُفَادُوهُمْ And when they come to you as captives, you ransom them. وَهُوَ مُحَرَّمٌ عَلَيْكُمْ إِخْرَاجُهُمْ Although it is forbidden on you to expel them. أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ A question. Do you believe in a part of the book and you disbelieve in another part of the book? فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ That the recompense of those who would do such a thing among you إِلَّا خِزْيٌ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا Nothing but disgrace in this life. وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And in the day of judgment, يُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ أَشَدِّ الْعَذَابِ They would return to the most severe punishment. وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِرٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُونَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of what you do. أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ اشْتَرَوُوا الْحَيَاةَ الدُّنْيَا بِالْأَخِرَةِ Those are the ones, those who purchased this life in return of the hereafter. فَلَا يُخَفَّفُ عَنْهُمُ الْعَذَابِ The torment, the punishment in the hereafter would never be lightened. وَلَا هُمْ يُنْصَرُونَ And they would never be victorious. These verses talks about Bani Israel, the children of Israel, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, and those who are pleased with what their forefathers did. As we heard last time in the previous verse, verse number 83, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the covenant from Bani Israel, that they would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that they would be kind to the parents and so on. And we talked about covenants, and mithaq is a covenant with heavy oath, and that covenant is taken from the human beings, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through the revelation from Allah, through the books that were revealed. And this refers to the Torah, to the Torah that was revealed to Musa alayhi salam. And they ratified to it, and they bore witness that this is the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we heard before that the same thing when it comes to the Qur'an. When we recite the Qur'an, we are basically taking this covenant upon ourselves, that we would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that we are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so on. And then when a person breaks the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we heard the severe punishment from the creator of the heavens and the earth. Why? Because we, when we take the covenant, and when we take this covenant with the heavy oath, we need to be those who would submit themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding Bani Israel, so that they would repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah took the covenant from them. What is the covenant? More than what is mentioned before. لا تسفكون دماءكم Do not shed your blood. And this, as we will talk inshallah about the benefits, it's literally talking about their blood. Do not shed your blood. Usually human beings, they do not shed their own blood. But they shed the blood of another one, another human being. But since the followers of a messenger that a nation or an ummah is like one body, as the Prophet ﷺ said about the believers, they're like one body. If one is hurt, then it's the same as one part of one's body is in pain, then the person will have the pain also. The whole body will have the experience of the pain. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to shedding the blood, that they were shedding the blood of their own selves. They would kill one another. How is that? These verses, as it's mentioned in the tafsir or the explanation of the verses, the tribes at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the Jewish tribes in al Medina, they were allies to some of the Arab tribes present, Al-Aws wal Khazraj in al Medina. So some of them would be allies with Al-Aws and some would be an allies to the Khazraj. And whenever there is a war would erupt between the two Arab tribes, then accordingly the Jewish tribes, those who were allied with them, they would fight against one another in which this is something that was mentioned in their books, that this is forbidden for them to fight against one another. So they would fight with the idol worshippers against their own brothers in faith. And that would lead them to expel. If they were victorious, they would 
deal and be the means to expel their brothers in faith from their dwellings if they were victorious over them. ثُمَّ أَقْرَرْتُمْ وَأَنْتُمْ تَشْهَدُونَ And you were ratified with this and you agreed to this when it comes to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the revelation that was sent to you that you would never do such a crime. And then they broke this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we heard before the time of the Prophet ﷺ, this is something that they would do. تَقُتُلُونَ أَنفُسَكُمْ That you would kill your own selves. And this by itself has great meaning. Again, it's one ummah. That when people would kill one another, and they're supposed to be following the same book, and they are one nation, they're basically killing their own selves. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them that then you are the ones that were killing one another, killing your own selves, your own people. وَتُخْرِجُونَ فَرِيقًا مِنْكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِهِمْ And you would expel a party of them out of their houses and out of their dwellings. After you had taken the covenant that you would not shed the blood of your own people and you would not drive your own people out of their homes. And you would help their enemies. تَظَاهَرُونَ عَلَيْهِمْ You would help their enemies with sins and transgression. Sins that has to do between the person and the creator of the heavens and the earth. And transgression in which a person would transgress and cause harm to others. وَإِنْ يَأْتُوكُمْ أُسَارَ And this is the double standards or what it means by believing in part of the book and disbelieving in another part of it. That they would fight against their own brothers and they would expel them out of their homes if they were victorious of course. And when they would take them as captives, they would then apply the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the covenant that was taken upon them from the book before the Prophet ﷺ in the Torah, that they would ransom their captives. So after they would fight against them and expel them out of their homes, when they are captives, they would seek the means to ransom them. And although it is forbidden for them to expel them from their homes to start with, so this is basically applying some of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and turning away from some of the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Picking and choosing from the revelation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what would fit their own desires. Then the condemnation comes in. Do you believe in part of the book and disbelief in another part of it? فَمَا جَزَاءُ مَنْ يَفْعَلُ ذَلِكَ مِنْكُمْ That the punishment of those who would do such a thing that they would believe in part of the book and disbelieve in another part of it, they would only get disgrace in this life, and in the day of judgment, they shall return to the most severe torment, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of what you're doing, that means many benefits here for people to ponder over this. And these are the ones, those who sold this life, for what? For they sold the hereafter for the cheap price of this life, meaning that they have nothing in the hereafter, and for the benefit of this life to be attached to it. So the punishment would not be lightened for them, and they would never be victorious. We hear the meanings. This is what the Bani Israel at the time of the Prophet ﷺ did, in which they took part of the book, and they applied it on their own selves and their own brothers from different tribes, and they didn't apply another part of the book. They basically picked and chose from the book of Allah, from the covenant that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took upon them. The covenant was, one, not to shed blood, two, not to expel one another from their homes, and to ransom the captives. These three are part of the covenant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they would not apply the first two, means that they would fight against one another, and they would expel one another from their homes, but they would apply only ransoming those who they captive. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them in these verses and called them in such a severe statement. You believe in part of the book and you disbelieve in other parts of it. We know that disbelieving in a part of the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed would take the person outside the fold of the truth. Imagine somebody believe in some portion of the Qur'an and disbelieve in another portion of the Qur'an. That takes the person outside the fold of Islam. And a person might not say ever whatsoever that. A person would say, I believe in all the book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And they would say that too, that they believe in all what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Prophet Musa alayhi salam. But they came on to, to their actions, when they picked and choose whatever fits their desires, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them with such a severe statement.
So what are the benefits that we need to learn from these verses? And how this at the time of the Prophet ﷺ was in such a way and addressing them that they need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they need to adhere to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to follow the way of the Prophet ﷺ. Inshallah ta'ala right after the break we'll start to learn what are the benefits that we learn from these verses so that we avoid these evil actions and to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Stay with us inshallah ta'ala. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد Story of Hajj لك ومن This program is not about the rituals of Hajj Rather about the story that is behind each ritual of Hajj, the Tawaf around the Kaaba has a story. The sacrifice has a story. The Sa'i between Safa and Marwa has a story. The sacrifice of Ibrahim to his son has a story. Standing in the mountain of Arafah has a story. This program is not devoted only to those who are going to Hajj, also to those who are staying at home. Now, he is to call his father to Islam, to monotheism. Later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanding Ibrahim alayhi salam to sacrifice his only son. Another test. Join Imam Karim Abu Zaid in his program, Story of Hajj, as he takes us on a journey through the life of Ibrahim, peace be upon him, and teaches us the history behind each ritual of Hajj. Huda, a light in every home. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah, verses number 84 to 86, Surah Al-Baqarah. We recite the verses and we get to understand the meaning of it briefly, but we need to discuss the benefits, the practical benefits that we need to learn so that we apply in our life and so that we subject ourselves to the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to submit ourselves to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So the question is, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us individually when we would recite these verses in Surah Al-Baqarah. First, we need to realize that the deen of Allah, that the religion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose for the believers is something that should be taken very strongly and not to be belittled and not to be turned away from. It's covenants. Covenant meaning that a person will be held responsible as we heard in the verses. The nations before Bani Israel, when the covenant was taken from them, they turned away from it. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them in the Qur'an. There's no more revelation to come. So that's why we need to be careful because the matter has been made clear to us. There's no difference between one individual or the other. What makes the person subjected to the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is their own actions. Not their tribe, not their race, none of these things. It's our own actions. So either we follow the same path of destruction or we choose to submit ourselves to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. And this nation, the ummah of the Prophet wasallam, the time of the Prophet wasallam, the companions and the early generations of Islam, and throughout generations has been proven that, yes, they fulfilled the covenant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with the companions radiallahu anhum, and with those who followed their path in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was pleased with them. So we need to realize about the importance of the covenants, and that shedding the blood of uh, the brothers in the faith is such a severe crime, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned them, and this is something that the covenant was taken also from among the Muslims in the verses in the Qur'an, in many parts of the Qur'an, in Surah An-Nisa and others, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took this covenant from the believers, and do not expel one another out of their homes, killing a soul, and expelling a human being from their homes, they are too severe 
and they are always linked together, which shows the severity of expelling someone from their home. This is such a severe crime, and this is something that is mentioned here in the Quran. And also, in Surah An-Nisa, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, said also the same thing with regarding to killing and expelling oneself from one's home. In the test that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Fala wa Rabbi kala yu'minun." After that, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Walau anna katabna alayhim." Which means that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have ordained unto the believers that they would kill themselves or they would expel themselves from their homes, only few would submit themselves. These two things are severe tests for the human beings. And alhamdulillah, it's by the mercy of Allah that this is of course not part of our religion to kill oneself or to expel oneself from one home. But this is something that is forbidden for the Ummah to do that to their own brothers and sisters in faith. So the severe crime that a Muslim would do to his Muslim brother, Muslim killing a Muslim, Muslim expelling a Muslim out of his home or out of his country, whatever there is, while people are witnessing that, that they took the covenant upon themselves. The nations before they breached this covenant and as a result Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's punishment was unto them. And what about us as Muslims? We need to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we have a phone call. Uh, Brother Abdullah from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum, Sayyid. Thank you uh, for this uh, wonderful program. Allah ibn Sheikh, I uh, have a question. Please, uh, could you tell us more about how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty took a covenant from the children of Israel? No. How the covenant was taken from them? No. Okay, inshallah. Okay. Sure, inshallah. Uh, so uh, showing these severe crimes Killing, expelling ones from their own dwellings This is something that was present in the revelation before the Quran And in the Quran So we need to realize that these are crimes to stay away from And then also we need to realize it's another benefit To be warned from those who breach this covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And that they deserve to be condemned in the Qur'an as we heard, and how they had this double standards, that whenever there was a benefit for them, there was a benefit for them, uh, they would kill one another. If they thought that there's a materialistic benefit for them, they would ally themselves to their enemies, and they would attack their own brothers for their own personal benefits. Such a, a humiliating way of life that the Muslims, the believers should stay away from that. See, the statement is mentioned here that you kill your own self. This is what means that you kill your own brothers as if you are killing your own self. Because this ummah, the ummah is one, and anyone that would cause any harm to part of the ummah is basically causing harm to the whole ummah. And this is what we need to see as Muslims all over the world. Yes, boundaries are separating them, but in reality, the faith should unite the believers and nothing should separate the Muslims. When a Muslim suffers in any part of the world, it's basically like the one's own brother is suffering. And this is something that the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith. And this is what we need to learn. We need to go over this uh, form of human-made boundaries that they separated the believers from one another. Yes, they should be uh, submitting themselves to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone and they should feel for one another and they should make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for one another and expelling once again from their homes helping the enemies with sins and transgression. Here there is mentioned al-ithm wal-udwan. Al-ithm is sin and al-udwan is transgression and both are sins but there are two different types of sins. Al-ithm can mean transgression. Sin can mean also transgression. It's more general than just the transgression. So every sin is not necessarily a transgression, but every transgression is a sin. So that's why these two words were mentioned. Sins, in this context, uh, referring to the sin or the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by breaking the covenant with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and al-udwan or the transgression when they would physically hurt their brothers and commit these sins transgressing the limits and causing harm to another human being especially they are brothers in faith and when they take them as captives 
they ransom them. This is definitely something that is good and it's a duty from one to the other is to ransom the captives to the best of their ability and they would do that in which it is forbidden for them to expel them to start with. So they would expel them and then ransom them when they are captives which is basically the double standards that has been condemned in this verse. Then we need to ponder a little bit over the statement أَفَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِبَعْضِ الْكِتَابِ وَتَكْفُرُونَ بِبَعْضِ Do you believe بعض means some, a portion, a portion of the book and وَتَكْفُرُونَ and disbelief in a portion of it? If we ask ourselves this question, do we believe in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do we believe in a part of it and disbelieve in a part of it? Of course the answer is that we believe in the whole book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Qur'an, the miraculous words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This context of this sentence is mentioned about applying some of the orders of Allah and turning away from some of the orders of Allah. And the statement that was mentioned, you believe in part of it and disbelief in another part of it. This is such a severe statement. Again, why? Because we need to be careful that when a person would apply part of the book, apply some of the verses of the Qur'an, and turn away from other verses of the Qur'an. Apply some of the way of the Prophet ﷺ. And turning away of part of the religion. Based on what? Based on desires. Based on many different reasons. But this is not religion. Religion means that a person submit oneself totally, unconditionally to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No difference between one order or the other. Why? Because it's all from the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. The source is the same. This is the same book. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha alladheena amanu, O you who believe. That means what? That means what comes after it, as Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he said, that you need to pay attention, give it your ears. Because what comes after it, it's either an order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to do, or something that we are forbidden from doing. And there's no difference between one verse or the other. Otherwise, for those who pick and choose, based on their desire, these orders are easy. So let's, uh, submit ourselves with regards to these orders. But then, when the orders comes to our own wealth, that we give some of our wealth, that we give up what is haram, riba, usury, or whatever, that we have to abide by certain rulings, and it's difficult for our own selves, then the person would turn away. As if this is not part of the book. This is such a severe crime, that if a person do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this can lead to what is even worse. So we need to remember this part of the verse very well that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned Bani Israel because they picked and chose some of the orders of Allah and they applied it and they turned away of some of it. And we as Muslims today as the Prophet sallallahu warned us that we will follow the path or a group of the Muslims would follow the path of the nations before. Yes there will always be a group as the Prophet sallallahu promised they're always going to be a group that is superior at all times, victorious at all times, those who would adhere to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, since this religion, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and by the mercy of Allah, is saved. No distortions in it when it comes to the text. The text is saved. The application of the text at the best of all times, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, at the time of the early generations of Islam, it's all there. For anybody that wants to follow the truth, it's easy for the person to find out. And we need to submit ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in such a way. But if a portion would choose to follow the path of the nations before, in which they would use the religion for their own materialistic benefit. Some people, they would adhere to some of the orders of Allah because it gives them some form of a comfort. So they would apply these orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some people they pray so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bless their trade or their work or their health for example. Definitely prayers, salah, giving zakah, all the different acts of worship brings what is good in this life and in the hereafter. But why would a Muslim pray or give zakah? Is it to be happy on the face of earth? We do that because this is the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. And if the person having this attitude, then the goodness of this life will come about. But if we pray because it's easy to pray, but then when it's difficult for a person to perform the salah, then he or she turns away. Applying a part of it, not applying another part. 
being patient in some things and not being patient in other things. And we can keep on with the examples. There are so many examples and we are faced with this test in every day in our life. Especially if a person is living in an environment that doesn't encourage him or her to be steadfast on the deen of Islam. Do we pick and choose or are we applying the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us? Again, such a severe statement that we need to be aware of this and we need to submit ourselves and to say that we believe in all the book. And truthfulness comes in place here, which is another lesson and a benefit that we learn. That a person, when he says something, when he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered us to do, to do such and such, then we need to be truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We need to have what's in our hearts, on our tongues, in our actions, everything in conformity, so that we are truthful with ourselves and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned and mentioned that those who would pick and choose, that they would have a disgrace in this life. Humility on the face of earth as a result of having the truth and having the book of Allah and then picking and choosing whatever would fits the desires and then turning away from others that a person might feel difficult or so. That they would have punishment in this life and in the hereafter. Not just in the hereafter, but also in this life disgrace, khizi. Khizi means humility, disgrace, that a person will be humiliated. And this is one of the worst punishments on the face of earth when a person is humiliated. And that's why with iman, with faith, the believers would never be humiliated. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَلَا تَهِنُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَنْتُمُ الْأَعْلَوْنَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ That do not be weak, do not feel grief when you are superior, but with the condition that you are believers. Believers are always superior. Always, even if they are physically weak, they are still superior with their iman, with their faith, with their strength that they would seek from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most rich, the most powerful subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why the believers, they turn to the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. They take the means, yes, but their hearts are attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and none but the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is linking this actions with the punishment of such a crime that there will be a disgrace in this life and a severe punishment in the hereafter. We have a phone call. Uh, Sister Um Muhammad from UAE. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Are you fine? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Uh, regarding uh, last week's question about 27 time uh, hatana about yes. the salah. Okay. Right. I want to tell you now I am widow. Okay, my okay. Uh, husband expired, Allah and I have children, mm-hmm. okay, I have four boys, okay. but I tell them to go to the mosque to pray, you know, always I tell them, but all the time they are busy, they mm. say they, we pray, we pray, now I don't see, because they are in the office or in the room, I don't know, mm. huh? maybe they they are praying, okay, right. mm-hmm. so did I get hashana or no? Inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. But I didn't forget the question, inshallah, in the last segment, inshallah ta'ala, if Allah gives us life, I will respond to it, inshallah. So stay with us, inshallah, and you'll hear the answer, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khair. So in the verse, we heard that there is a punishment in this life and there is a punishment in the hereafter. That which is another benefit, that a believer, when they recite the Qur'an and they see things, what's happening all over the world and the affairs of the Muslims, things would make sense. Why? Because this is the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who would break the covenant of Allah, they have a disgrace in this life. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid punishment in the hereafter. We'll be right back, inshallah ta'ala, right after the break. The Spirit of Hajj. Join Sheikh Ma'in Shusa as he speaks about the true essence of Hajj, its meaning, and the wisdom behind its rituals. Hajj, brothers and sisters, has great virtues which have been narrated to us by our beloved Prophet. Whoever performs Hajj for the sake of Allah and therein utters no 
evil nor commits any evil act would return from his hajj as the day his mother gives birth to him that is he would return pure from sins as if he was just born al eid is even a larger gathering of muslims in the same town all of these and more in the spirit of hajj huda a light in every home لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك إن الحمد حج step by step Hajj is a great act of worship performed by millions of Muslims every year If you would like to know what ihram is the types of Hajj kinds of tawaf permitted and forbidden acts during Hajj Join Dr. Musa McGuire and Sheikh Mohammed Salah in his wonderful show, Hajj Step by Step. But what specifically are, are the benefits of Hajj? Performing Hajj and Umrah overcome poverty and remove sin. The permanent mahram, a person who can never marry to this woman. Uh, what is the, the first rite of Hajj? And is it accurate to say that Hajj actually begins before you even get to that? The ihram of a woman actually is in her face and hand. The very first house of worship was appointed for mankind on earth is Al-Kaaba. Hajj step by step, where he will explain all of that and more in the light of Quran and Sunnah. Huda, a light in every home. Alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu ala rasulullah Continuing with the benefits that we learn from the verses of the Qur'an Learning from the nations before Learning from the ways of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth That never changes as he said subhanahu wa ta'ala Laysa bi amaniyyikum Wala amaniyya ahl kitab It's not according to your wishes or desires, or the wishes and desires of the people of the book. Whoever do righteous good deeds, he will be rewarded, and she will be rewarded. And whoever do evil deeds, they will be dealt with the justice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the believers, if they die in the state of Islam, they are the ones that will be forgiven, or if they will be to be punished, they will eventually enter Jannah. But those who die in the state of disbelief, they will be in the hellfire forever. So the benefit is that we need to learn from these nations that we believe in all of the book. We submit ourselves to all what's in the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in all of our affairs, in the masajid, the houses of Allah, in our homes, in our relationships, marriage between a husband and a wife, the children, and buying and selling transactions. All of our affairs we need to refer back to the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and submit ourselves. We have a phone call. Brother Muhammad from Saudi Arabia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, you just now mentioned that uh, a person will never be humiliated uh, with uh, the background of Qur'an and uh, Islam. Yes. So I just wanted to know if there are any ayats in the Quran which uh, will help us have uh, uh, honor in in our daily life, in our work, in our uh, in everywhere. So is there any ayat or such which we can recite? And uh, no. I just wanted to know that. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much. Uh, and again, this issue of the test that we go through every day. This is something that we need to witness, especially that our life is very short. Even if we live for 100 years, it's short because it's limited. So we need to witness these tests that we go through, and we need to have the truthfulness in our hearts that we believe in all of the book. Once the matter is clear to us that this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us of doing, 
We need to say we listen and we obey and then we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which shows the importance of knowledge and having the patience to apply the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to prepare ourselves to be sometimes strangers. You might be a stranger because you might be the only one that applying the orders of Allah and once the heart is ready for such a state then a person would seek the patience and the help from the creator of the heavens and the earth alone. Also the verses states that there is going to be punishment in the hereafter. This is the worst punishment. This is the severe punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It also states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unaware of what people do. So when a person thinks that those who would commit transgressions, they can be just left like that, of course not. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the all-seer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise for the people to act accordingly, for the believers to do one thing. And for the disbelievers to be even punished more as a result of disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that this life is basically we are selling something in return of something else. We do that with our own transactions and we do that with our life and our time and our wealth. Either we give what we give and everybody has to give their wealth and their time. Either for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in return of Jannah, paradise. Or the person would he sell his own life and his own self for the punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala which is the real loss when a person would see that in the day of judgment no victory, nothing, no help whatsoever unless the person would seek the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and applying the book of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us to be Muslims to be in state of submission at all times and not to just pick and choose but to submit ourselves to the deen of Islam and to the orders of Allah uh, because of the time and with the questions the question of last week was regarding to the 27 times the reward is given for those who pray jama'ah. And the question about uh, the sisters, when they pray at home, would they get the same rewards of the men, those who would go to the masjid? As I mentioned last week, there's a beautiful hadith where the Prophet ﷺ gave the good news to the women that if she is obedient to her husband and so on, she would get the same reward. And we had the question that the sister is a widow. And she has children and she encouraged them to go to the masjid and to make the salah. And sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. So uh, would she get the rewards? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And there's a beautiful hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high. He said, أَنَا عِنْدُ حُسْنَ ظَنِّ عَبْدِي بِي فَلِيَظُنَّ عَبْدِي بِي مَا شَاءَ Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that He subhanahu wa ta'ala the most high is according to what your expectations are. If you expect from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you the rewards and uh, to have mercy on you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful, especially with the truthfulness. And that's why also when the Prophet sallallahu said, the meaning of which in the authentic hadith, whoever asks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for martyrdom, but with the condition that a person is truthful, this person will get the levels of the martyrs, even if he would die on his own bed. So the same thing, when a person have the truthfulness, that seeking the rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and doing the best we can in which encouraging and, and showing what is good and what is evil and so on and hope for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is definitely something as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it uh, obligatory for the men to go to the masjid and not for the women Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise and he's the most just subhanahu wa ta'ala and they would get the rewards in full nobody will have any deficiency in the rewards because we are dealing and worshipping the most merciful subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I hope that this would uh, explain the matter. Basically with the truthfulness, yes, a person would seek the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. Uh, the question with uh, regarding to uh, how was the covenant taken from Bani Israel. Uh, later on inshallah ta'ala we would see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took their covenant as it's mentioned in verse number 93 in Surah Al-Baqarah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took their covenant and the mount was uh, leveled on top of them. When Musa alayhi salam took 70 from among the elites of Bani Israel and they went to uh, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to them this covenant and the mount was uh, raised, the mountain was raised on top of their head and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, ordered them to take the covenant with quwa with strength as it says وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِيثَاقَكُمْ وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَكُمُ الطُّورِ خُذُ مَا أَتَيْنَاكُمْ بِقُوَّةِ That take what we have given you with strength and power 
And they took it, they took the covenant under that fear, and, and when they were seeing this great miracle from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but then in the same verse Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, said that they said, سَمِعْنَا وَعَصَيْنَا They said, we listen and we disobey. So this is how the covenant was taken from them, and they breached this covenant afterwards. With regarding to the verses, that uh, is there any verses in the Qur'an that would give honor to the Muslim to stay away from being humiliated in our daily life? The issue of humiliation or having honor and dignity, uh, there is no such uh, specific verses in the Qur'an that a person would recite and automatically would get some honor. It's basically the whole religion of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an that honor and dignity is for the believers. وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ That the izza, which is honor and dignity, is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa and for the believers. So that means, it depends on how much the level of al-iman is, then honor and dignity will be accordingly. If a person's iman is deficient, then this is how much honor and dignity that they would have, and the rest will be humiliation. The more the person increases the, the iman, the more the dignity and the honor will increase. So it's basically the whole religion of Islam. And that's why those who commit sins, they are humiliated even if they have the highest status. It's something that once it's present in the heart, a person can be very wealthy, a person can be physically very powerful, but he or she are humiliated as a result of the sins, and disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that Al-Hasan al-Wasri rahimahullah, he said, even if they would be in such a powerful state, أَبَى اللَّهُ إِلَّا أَنْ يَذِلَّ مَنْ عَصَاهُ Which means Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the sunnah of Allah, that is in such a way, that is no way a person will be honored and dignified if he is committing sins. Those who commit sins are in state of humiliation in this life and in the hereafter. So we seek the dignity and the honor in the religion of Islam. You see, when a Muslim applies the deen of Islam, it doesn't matter where he is or she is, he would have this confidence that he is turning to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. We see that in the companions of Allah anhum. Rabbi ibn Amil, radiallahu anhu, when he went to the king of Persia and he had dressed uh, old clothing and he was riding a very weak animal physically, he does not have the means of honor and dignity. But he had this heart that is full of honor and dignity to be a believer. And he spoke to the king in such a confident way that he told them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent us to take the people out of the injustice of religions to the justice of Islam and from the tightness of this life to the spaciousness of the hereafter. And this is how they understood their message that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted them with. Uh, there was another question with uh, regarding to the Salatul Taraweeh. This was from last week uh, about uh, the Imam of the Masjid decided to pray the Tahajjud only 11 rak'ah, which is something that is valid. And there's the Hadith of Aisha radiallahu anha in which the Prophet sallam only prayed 11 rak'ah, whether it's in Ramadan or other than Ramadan. But this is a matter that one of the matters that the differences of opinions of it is such a, a beautiful thing. And it's as Shaykh al-San rahimahullah said, and I'm trying to be as brief as I can. What's the best is, is what fits the people. If people would like to stand long in the salah, this is better for them to pray only 11 rak'ah, but long rak'ah. If they feel that they would want to make more ruku' and more sujood, then to increase the number of rak'at, there is no harm in this whatsoever, because the Prophet ﷺ said in the authentic hadith, Salatu layli mathna mathna. The night prayer is two rak'ah after two rak'ah. So both ways are okay and it depends on the ways of the people. But for those who people would say that other one, one way or the other is innovation in the religion, the people of knowledge, they say that this is not correct. Definitely the best is 11 rak'ah, but to be long as we heard. Uh, we stop at this time inshallah ta'ala and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for those who are going for hajj and those who are present in hajj and to forgive our sins and uh, inshallah ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and people can uh, get rewarded for the benefits of the deeds and inshallah ta'ala the, for the next three weeks uh, the program will be recorded uh, continuing with the verses of course uh, because of the season of hajj inshallah ta'ala we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept from all of us wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala muhammadin wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh afala yatadabbaroon al-qur'an 
ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا فلا يتدبرون القرآن ولو كان من عند غير الله لوجدوا فيه اختلافا كثيرا